Hi guys, Prax Girl here. In our introduction, I defined praxeology as the science that studies the logic of human action. In this lesson, I'd like to define the approach praxeology takes in studying human action and deriving universal laws. Unlike the sciences of chemistry or physics, when approaching human beings, praxeology has to employ a method of acquiring knowledge that does not rely on observation, but on discursive reasoning. Or we may say, logical deduction. The laws of human action that praxeology arrives at are necessarily true and universal because they're logically implied by simple and undeniable facts. What would make a fact undeniable? A fact is undeniable when any attempt to deny it must prove it to be true. Once we state one of these undeniable facts, we're able to discover further implied truths that hold at all times and to all individuals, regardless of sex, race, creed, or color. As long as the implied arguments are valid and their premises based on the initial undeniable truth, the soundness in every step of the logical chain is incontestable. The starting point of praxeology is an undeniable truth itself, and a very easy one to remember. Human action is purposeful behavior. It's from this undeniable fact that all of praxeology as a science is deduced. This fact or axiom is undeniable because, as we stated before, if you try to deny that human action is purposeful, you would be acting purposefully yourself. It should be easy to see why logical deduction is the only necessary and fitting method to come to this conclusion. Before I go on, you might be asking yourself, is it appropriate to study human action through observation or what scientists like to call induction? To answer this, we need only to consider the separation between the objects that sciences like chemistry or physics study and the unique characteristic of human beings that we stated before in our axiom. These sciences can plot out the courses of stones, atoms, or planets through cause and effect. But humans differ categorically in one key way. Human beings act. They have goals and purposes, and they try to achieve those goals. Stones, atoms, planets have no goals or preferences, hence they either move or are moved. They cannot choose, select paths of action, or change their minds. Men and women can and do. Sciences like chemistry and physics are able to investigate objects and classify them to their minutest details. They can turn our observable world into bits of data to quantify. People, on the other hand, cannot be quantified. Every day, people learn, adopt new values and goals, and change their minds. People cannot be slotted and predicted as can objects without minds or without the capacity to learn and choose. The action axiom shows that the uniqueness of all individuals is the logically necessary starting point for studying human behavior. There have been so-called scientists who have tried to disprove this notion and claimed that the methods of the natural sciences are the only true way to acquire knowledge of man and reality, but we can easily see how silly and futile their attempts are. Here we are at Grand Central Station. The hustle and bustle here is world renowned. I just want to drive home my example. I want to test two different ways of approaching human behavior. A truly scientific behaviorist would stand here and observe the facts, people walking back and forth aimlessly. A true student of human action would realize that the people have aims and goals. They're trying to get from work to home. It's obvious which one would be the genuine scientist. To try and box humans into the type of predictable data and statistics that work in sciences like biology, astronomy, or geology is not only completely inappropriate, but is essentially a denial of the action axiom, a contradiction. Praxeology's method is one kept in the realm of thinking, precisely because as human beings we already contain the tools necessary to understand the purposefulness of action. What should also become apparent is that as certain as praxeology is of the uniqueness of all people, its explanations are also limited in scope by this fact. Logically, the search for complete predictability in the realm of human action is the search for the impossible and is therefore profoundly unscientific. I'll see you in the next lesson.